All I can say is, wow, thank you, Dr. Bernson, for a powerful, powerful uh, set of reasons for why one should become SEERS certified. All I can do is concur. I've never seen anything in medicine, never felt anything that was so satisfying as the work that I get to do now. Uh, while you're up there, we didn't really ask you the same series of questions we asked the other doctors. So as you're putting together this group of excellent individuals, physicians, that we've, we've gotten to see a bit of today, uh, tell me wh what you think your uh, goal is with regards to the certification program. The goal of the certification program is to approach the dominant issues of chronic inflammatory response syndrome from a perspective of science. There must be rigor. There must be material that's peer reviewed. Scott, no one's mentioned that his paper was published just the other day on a second round of NeuroQuant papers. Would you go into that just a little bit? When we talk about NeuroQuant and treatment protocols, we just established in our first paper that there were differences in brain sizes. The next paper that Scott was lead author for showed that our treatment protocol fixes the swelling of forebrain parenchyma, fixes the large pallidum, fixes the problems of cortical gray enlargement. It didn't fix caudate. Well, I think Dr. Ackerley is probably going to be publishing the third NeuroQuant paper before we get around to it, so ours might be the fourth. Wouldn't it be nice to show these protocols fix caudate atrophy and multinuclear atrophy? Well, that's what we're going to do. We have the data. It's a matter of putting it together. So my approach is not to be critical of Dr. Rappaport, and in, in fact, just the opposite. It is innovative, theoretical thinking that fits a huge role in bringing new elements and new design. And the whole point of bringing new physicians in is to take the stuff that I've done, primitive as it is, and expanding it. So, so is it fair to say that as you get these different viewpoints from different uh, physicians that are certified in your specific protocol, as they bring forth new ideas and new direction, your, your, your thinking, your responsibility at this stage of the game is to keep them on track with data-based findings. I, I agree that it's part of my duty, but it's part of everyone's duty to be cognizant that we not only, when showing a new paradigm, have to have good ideas, we've got to have solid data to back up everything we do, because we are going to be challenged. The court case is a simple example. And as we stay focused on that line of thinking, you're, it's not a discouragement to, we're not discouraging those thought, that thought process. In fact, we're inviting it into our group. Right. And we honor innovation. We honor new thinking. We honor new approaches. And yet, if someone says the amygdala is capable of being retrained, let's see the data. Did the amygdala get bigger? Did the amygdala get smaller? Let's start with the simple things. We have access to answer those things. And if we don't know how to show changes with amygdala training, how can we approach an answer with some data? And if we don't have data, then let's just say we don't have data. Fair enough. Can you t describe a little bit of your vision with regard regards to genomics and where you are right now in that process? I'm, I'm reminded of the uh, time about 15 years ago, my daughter was getting ready to finish high school, and there was word that Jupiter was going to be coming up over the horizon, and there was going to be no moon and no sunset. And we could see not only Jupiter, but several moons with a telescope. And they had a telescope that would do the job. I think it was 150 bucks or something. And before genomics, proteomics was that telescope. But now, genomics takes us so much further that what we have by analogy is a Hubble telescope to look deeper, deeper into DNA, control of DNA regulation, and effect of our therapies on DNA activation of metabolic pathways that govern human illness. We have the capability with genomics to redefine what is disease. We have the capability with genomics 
to show mitochondrial diseases. We can measure capsase pathways. This one I showed yesterday. We've got that data. Now, the fact we don't see any changes in apoptotic pathways doesn't change the fact that maybe our sample size is too small. Maybe we will see these. But with genomics, we are taking the whole issue of CRS as an example of application of arcane ideas, innovative ideas. But we're going to put data on patients as we publish and we're going to put that up against anybody's peer review. And we're going to show that what we do in CRS not only has an academic background, but it leads the way in showing new therapies for old diseases that are in refractory to care. Last thing, would you speak a little bit about your thought process on the group of certified physicians that are now practicing your protocol? Uh, what do you, uh, how do you look at that? How do you, how do you view that? group of people that, that now are practicing what you have developed over so many years. Yesterday I was complaining about Canada geese in our property. They're everywhere. They make noise and poop and, geez, just go back to Canada, will ya? And yet what I see is similar to a Canada goose mom and dad seeing their little kids get born, start moving around finding their own way, growing up, losing feathers, putting feathers, and then flying off into their new territory, leading the way. And I'm the old Canada Goose grandparent looking at folks with new ideas, new energy, taking my stuff way beyond seeing Jupiter and seeing the vast supernovas of the universe. This is, this is the culmination of my career, the culmination of my career is to see these brilliant people, energetic, caring people, take my work and really flesh it out, flesh it out, flesh it out, and expand it. And that is goosebumps, the best thing that's ever happened to me. Thank you.